Can you believe I pulled it together <laughs> for another morning? <clears throat> uh, I've been up a long time already today and done quite a few things, just getting ready for what I have to do just as soon as I'm through with this. So people have asked what's with all the boxes and everything else. Uh, that must uh, mean that you uh, uh, are just now joining us or something. But Constance and I are moving. Okay, after 22 years, uh, uh, we're moving. And uh, it's uh, quite a challenge because we're not grown-ups. And uh, <laughs> we may be magicians, but, uh, you know, uh, I tell you, we need to, to focus a little bit more on uh, the Kabbalistic world of Asiya uh, in order to master adult skills <laughs> that are, are required of uh, adults moving nowadays. Okay, enough of that. Let's talk about magic. And let's talk about Goetic magic, which is what we've been doing for the last couple of days. And uh, first of all, there's a couple of things I would like to uh, at least initially begin covering. The idea and the question is, are there are the spirits objective or subjective? Are they real, independent entities living an independent life of their own that we somehow contact uh, as if they were a, a tribe of, of uh, indigenous people somewhere that we somehow uh, contacted and uh, are attempting to deal with? Uh, or call them on the phone or something like that there. And as, as far as Goetic spirits are concerned, are these guys just sitting around in hell playing pinochle or something? Just, just dreading the thought that some magician is going to conjure one of them and, and put them to work. Well, or are these things just in our mind. Now Rabbi Ben Clifford, <clears throat> peace be on him, says uh, it's all in your head. You just have no idea how big your head is. And that's more or less what I subscribe to. Okay. But that first part, it's all in your head. It's all in your head. You just have no idea how big your head is. People forget the second part of that quote because our head is as big as it gets. We are a perfect reflection. A consciousness unit similar to a terminal, a computer terminal. But the life of the, the identity is in the network itself, is in the source, is in the server. And the server is the singularity. And we are just minute reflections of that singularity. Just like we are the flat surface of a of a mirror, but the the real life on the other side of the mirror, the three dimensional life on the other side of the mirror, gives us gives us life. So there is no outside of your head. So don't even begin to think we can have a discussion about objective or subjective because it's all subjective. So 
That being said, okay, for the art of magic, the art form of magic, or at least ceremonial magic, we temporarily, for sake of convenience and, and the ease of triggering within ourselves our own natural responses to things that are objective, rather than vaporous and subjective, the magician projects all of these inward forces and qualities into the seemingly objective world. That's why we have actual wands that, and swords and, and things. We take our internalness and project it outward to deal with it. And we do it in a dramatic and ceremonial way. So keeping in mind there is no outside of yourself that that even things that even this watch okay ultimately is in me and so when we conjure a demon to uh, uh, visible appearance or, or at least visible presence or a notable presence we are using our own powers of visualization and, and uh, 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 ability to see things objectively and process them objectively, we turn them into subjective things. So, please, I'm not trying to say that Goetia is, is always totally psychological. Look, when I start to give questions on this, are they subjective or are they, are, are they uh, objective? Everything I say is easily misunderstood because the answer that I try to give already is elevating the, the discussion to a level where the two of us might not be uh, defining our nouns and word, verbs in the, in the same way. Okay, so it's, it's uh, in the gospel story of the Pharisees trying to trick Jesus. They were trying to drag uh, him into the, into the discussion, and he was trying to elevate it to, to, to a place where at least their nouns and verbs uh, meant the same thing to each other. But anyway, I've babbled on for long enough. Uh, keeping that in mind, I'm going to uh, read a little bit more uh, from the, the Key to Solomon's Key, where uh, I discuss the nature of uh, these spiritual forces. And it's in the section of the Seven Secrets of Solomon, but this is secret number five. Deity, archangels, Angels, intelligences, spirits, demons, and you and I are personifications of a hierarchy of consciousness. Deity, if we choose to call it deity, you can just make it an abstract, whatever it is, but deity is obviously at the top of the hierarchy of consciousness, the supreme consciousness, the supreme being. All creation is a play in the mind of God. Now, next lower in the hierarchy is a descending array of forces and energies that are more specialized envoys of intelligence in the mind of God. We could view them as units or aspects of natural forces and law calling them archangels, angels, and intelligences. We don't actually see these forces or these entities, but we're certainly aware of how they affect the world around us. For example, we could personify the law of gravity as the great archangel 
we could give it a name. Gravity AL. Gravity AL is a spiritual being with huge duties and responsibilities in the universe. As an archangel, it embodies all that is gravitational. We see the work of gravity manifest in almost infinite ways. Tugging at the t of the tidal moon. Falling of a raindrop. Sagging of a breast. Plummeting of a meteor. These specific expressions of gravity could be viewed as angels. Tugayel. Falayel. Sagayel and Plummet Ayel. Working under the authority of the Archangel Gravity Ayel. Gravity Ayel and his angels are responsible for organizing and directing all the work that takes place on the next and lowest level of consciousness, where the process of creating, sustaining, and destroying the material universe takes place. This is the world most of us consider objective reality. Magicians, however, have a more colorful name. The Infernal Regions. If you can suffer one more of my metaphoric excursions, let's look at God as the owner, the boss of a cosmic company. Archangels, angels, and intelligences are middle management. The workers themselves are spirits and demons that dwell on the factory floor, the lowest level of consciousness. Now, please don't... I'm a union guy. I'm not taking it that far. The workers are not the lowest level of consciousness. There is no outside of yourself. Okay, never mind. Solidarity, the worker's flag is deep. Well, anyway. The workers themselves are spirits and demons that dwell on the factory floor. These workers do all the heavy lifting in the universe, and they're a pretty rough bunch. After all, they're not only the cosmic uh, construction crew, they are the wrecking crew as well. This far down on the scale of consciousness, the purity of the upper levels has become fragmented and disorganized. If this level is not consciously directed by middle management, these broken pieces of the mind of God will, like brutish and restless mob of unemployed and unsupervised zombie workmen, discharge their awesome energy in chaotic and destructive ways. On the other hand, once controlled by higher intelligence, they become united in service to the company. If they continue to behave themselves, they eventually are promoted to middle management, etc. Now, I don't know how many Masons out there or people who are familiar with the, with the Masonic uh, uh, mythology and such. But uh, the Masonic story of Solomon personifies this spectrum of consciousness. God at the top, the great architect of the universe. Solomon and his fellow Grand Masters, King Hiram of Tyre and Hiram Abiff, in the middle and are in the middle and at the bottom the workmen of the temple. The masters or overseers of the work, fellow crafts or hewers on the mountains and in the quarries, and inner apprentices or bearers of burden. If the inner apprentice, apprentice works di diligently, he could be expected to be advanced to fellow craft. Once in place and functioning, this scenario paints a picture of a universe in balance, a spiritual utopia where everyone is laboring successfully under the direction and supervision to raise themselves 
and their inferiors to the next higher levels. From the Masonic myth, these were all so classed and arranged by the wisdom of Solomon that neither envy, discord, nor confusion was suffered to interrupt or disturb the peace and good fellowship which prevailed among the workmen." Unquote. But where do you and I fit in in this cosmic company of consciousness? Of course, it depends upon where our present level of consciousness positions us. In our unenlightened state, we're, we've convinced ourselves that we're infernal creatures living and dying on the factory floor. But once we open our eyes, however, we discover that we're relatively high on the hierarchical hierarchy of spiritual beings. In fact, we are each of us, the most important member of the middle management team, envied by the angels and feared by the spirits and demons. We are Solomon. And it's from that Solomonic self-identity where we are or can be made to be feared by the demons and trusted and empowered by uh, the forces above us. That's where the magi Goetic magician stands to conjure and control the spirits. And it's always good to remember both in the everyday world of Asiya and in the highest plains of Adzilith, it's good to be good to your workers. Okay, that's where we stop today. We have a big day ahead of us again. Uh, hopefully I'll be here tomorrow. Uh, long about next week, there may be interruptions in... Uh, uh, our broadcast but so far we've been doing pretty good we'll try to try to keep it up until then continue to be good to yourself and be good to each other do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law love is the law love under will <laughs>